Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Katherine Basu. And today on the Fit15, we'll be talking about how to naturally balance hormones to reduce anxiety during menopause. But I want you to know that this topic and this episode is going to share tips and insights that will benefit you even if you aren't currently going through menopause and even if you never will go through menopause. So male listeners, younger listeners, I hope you'll still continue to tune in. Lots of great insights here to help you if you are currently feeling stressed out and just really busy. Simple tools and strategies that I know you're going to really enjoy and will be able to implement during the episode and shortly after to see a big positive impact in your life. So I'm really excited about today's episode. Before I introduce you to today's guest and share more about her, I did want to mention that if you have kids listening, you may want to not have them listen because even though they might also be able to learn from this episode, we do have some adult themes that are discussed. So I want to give you that time to make that decision and do what you need to do as I share more about my guest. Today's guest is Dr. Carolyn Masseri. After almost 10 years of working as a traditionally trained colon and rectal surgeon, she knew she wanted to make a change. She wanted to escape the fix your symptoms, not your real problem way of practicing medicine. She studied functional medicine and now embraces a holistic approach to health, getting down to the root cause of issues like irritable bowel syndrome, hormonal imbalances, low energy, and irritability. She now helps women who are fed up with not being listened to or taken care of to get back to enjoying their work and their home lives. She works with women to find the root cause of their symptoms and create an individualized program to treat those root issues. So welcome to the podcast, Carolyn. I'm so excited to have you as my guest today. Thanks. It's really awesome to be here today. I'm really excited. So we've been chatting a little bit off the record, so we have, we have a lot to, to share with the listeners, but I think one of the, the key themes we were chatting about is just how, you know, obviously physical health is important, and I've had some guests on who've talked about their own personal journeys, you know, through menopause and, and being able to kind of ba- go beyond what their doctor said that they needed to do to get, take care of their physical health better, but we were chatting about how, you know, our health is not just our physical health. So could you kind of just talk about maybe just some of the changes that happen when we go through menopause and kind of getting us started with how we think we're going to have to feel when that happens, but then what we could actually expect to be able to, you know, live a little bit more than we think we'll be able to (laughs) at that time. Sure. So one of the things that I think happens to a lot of women as they start to approach menopause And it doesn't necessarily happen, you know, at 50, it can start for some people in their thirties and Mm -hmm. forties, is that we start to get to this place where our emotions are not as much under control as -hmm. they were when we were younger. And so things that didn't used to bother us are going to bother us a lot more. And the other thing that comes up is that we've put ourselves in this position as women of having to do it all. Mm -hmm. And when you're not as in control of your emotions and you're trying to do it all, you might find that a little bit of bitterness or a little bit of resentment comes up. Mm. And I'm in this group of women who are perimenopausal and menopausal. And for a lot of them, they've gotten to this place where they're like, I am done with everybody telling me how I can be and what I can do. And And it doesn't help any that their hormones are raging. You know, their hormones are going in 10 different directions. (laughs) And, And the other thing that's happening for an awful lot of them is that they're not, you know, they're not enjoying their sex lives. Mm hmm. You know, and it's interesting because when you get to that menopause, you can actually have a little bit more fun with sex because there's not this worry that you're going to get pregnant. Right. (laughs) You know, it could be a lot of fun. And instead, what it is is like, well, that's not really happening down there. I'm not really feeling it. I'm not really into it. You know, like I'll do it because my husband really wants me to, or my boyfriend really wants me to, but I'm not, you know, I'm not feeling it. Or we're feeling it so much that we can't, we, we feel embarrassed or we're like a little scared by it. 
Sure. And one of the things that I've been working on with people is we have this nerve that runs through our whole body. It's called the vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. And that vagus nerve is in, in charge of your parasympathetic nervous system. So for most people, they're pretty familiar with their sympathetic nervous system, fight, flight, freeze, um, got to get it done, got to get it done now, um, you know, can't quite, you know, don't feel like I can quite make it, worried about things. Mm -hmm. That's living in your sympathetic nervous system. And a lot of us, we live there most of the time. And we need that parasympathetic certain nervous system because that's where we rest, digest, um, pee. You can't mm -hmm. pee if you don't have that parasympathetic nervous system running. You can't poop. Or you, you know, you poop, but you're not in control of it, right? It's either you're constipated or you're going all the time. Sure. But it's, not, it's not equal. You know, it's not even. You're not, it's not normal. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and the other thing that your parasympathetic nervous system does is it controls your sexual response. So if you're constantly in your sympathetic nervous system, it's pretty hard to get down. Sure. It's pretty hard to even want to get down. You know, the, the, the desire might be there in your head, but the body is not necessarily going to respond the way that you'd like it to. Um, and so some of the things that you can do to get that parasympathetic system back on board, um, one of the big things is, um, is, is toning the, the vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. So, and you can do that by singing, um, humming, mm -hmm. diaphragmatic breathing. Um, even like when we finish up our yoga workout and we do that ohm, mm -hmm. really and truly what that ohm is, is it's getting that vagus nerve happy and calm. And, you know, there's a reason why ohm is the universal sound. Mm -hmm. And so like, and really like, you know, when you're doing your own, don't like, don't phone it in <laughs> right. your whole body, because that's going to get your, your, your vagus nerve, you know, doing its thing. Hi friends, it's Catherine. And for those of you who are using this episode to get in an out and back walk for 15 minutes. That was your half report reminder. We are seven and a half minutes into the episode. So if you only have 15 minutes today, you want to turn around now. All right, back to our conversation. And then, like I said, the diaphragmatic breathing is a big one too, because when we're nervous or we're trying to get a lot done or we're running around, we tend to breathe out of the top half of our chest. You know, we're just using our lungs and, we're, and, the, and the little rib muscles to breathe. Mm -hmm. But if you're using your diaphragm, your vagus nerve runs right up against the diaphragm. And so when you're using your diaphragm, you're, you're actually toning that segment of the vagus nerve so that it's more active. And then another thing that you can do, this doesn't necessarily specifically address the vagus nerve, but one of the things that we can do, if you've ever seen a cat fall off the back of the couch, <laughs> first thing they're going to do, they're going to look around, make sure you didn't see them do that. Right. <laughs> Second thing they're going to do is they're going to shake their whole body. And then they're just going to walk away like a queen. <laughs> and what they did when they shook is they got all that adrenaline that built up in that fall, they shook it out. So when we're nervous or we're worried or we're just running around really busy, you know, we're very dedicated to busy in mm. our lives, especially in this age group. And um, when we're running around and we're busy, we've got all these hormones going and what you can do when you shake is you're going to give those hormones a place to go hmm. because, you know, fight or flight um, is the normal, right? That's what we're supposed to do. But we have a tendency to do this thing called freeze. So there's fight, flight, or freeze. Mm -hmm. And when we freeze, that means we just hold ourselves really stiff and we stand there and we wait to see what's next. But we are so caught in that moment in the, in our, you know, in our sympathetic nervous system, that mm -hmm. the parasympathetic doesn't have a chance to work. Can't go to the bathroom, can't digest your food, definitely not going to want to get busy. <laughs> right. <laughs> so when you shake, what you're doing is you're giving all those hormones a place to go, a place to do their job, be done, and not have to build more up. It also gives your body this opportunity to, to have a, an end to 
the stress, if that mm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because what we tend to do is we just wrote, we're just rotating it all the time. We're just making more stress and keep it going and keep it going and keep it going. And then the end of the day comes and we want to sleep and we're like, ah, I'm so wound up. I'm so wired. So before you go to sleep, one of the things you can do is just do the shake. And there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Me personally, I really just love to put a little bit of music on and I mm -hmm. shake everything. I shake my hands, I shake my shoulders, I do a lot of shimmy, I shake my legs out. I might lie down on the floor and shake everything up, you know, my arms mm -hmm. and my legs, but 10 minutes. Okay. No, that's of good. Just good like really shaking your body. So those couple of things, doing the shaking, toning your vagus nerve, and I don't care if you're a really bad singer, do it in the shower when no one's <laughs> You I was going to say, probably, I was say, does it matter if we're good singers or not to use that? <laughs> right. And humming is great. You don't, nobody has to hear you humming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So, so those are just a couple of things that you can do that are going to like really help your body get back into its relaxed, happy, you know, wanting to, to, to do the fun things in life. Mm -hmm. right? To that place you know whether you're in menopause or you're not in menopause but especially if you're in menopause because like i said we're just the hormones are really not letting us get in touch with our relaxation response mm -hmm. no, that makes sense and so i mean would this help i mean we were chatting to that you know women don't actually you know surprise surprise they don't have to turn to artificial hormones or antidepressants to feel better so a lot of these techniques are maybe where they want to start or do you have any other things to to share in terms I of think, yeah those are great places to start mm -hmm. and you know some of the other things that make a difference um is clean eating is going to help you mm -hmm. know not eating too much sugar because sugar does definitely fuel that whole emotional response sure and the other thing is that um in order to maintain so one of the things women worry a lot about as they're approaching menopause is do i have enough estrogen mm -hmm. it gets talked about a lot in the news it, it's in all the reports and people talk about, you know, that I need an estrogen supplement. Most of us don't need mm. an estrogen supplement because we're getting so much estrogen just in the water supply, in our food supply, um, by exposure to plastics mm -hmm. that, um, the, all of these, um, pesticides, all of these things are what we call estrogen, uh, sorry, endocrine disruptors. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a lot of estrogen, but it's unopposed, meaning that there's nothing to balance it out. Mm -hmm. So as you get farther into menopause, you're making less and less progesterone. And progesterone, you may be surprised to find out, is one of the hormones that makes you feel good. Hmm. It does also make you gain weight if you take too much of it, you know, sure. if you have too much of it. So, and your body doesn't really make a lot of progesterone after you stop ovulating because that's the main way that you make progesterone. Mm -hmm. So for some women, they may have to supplement their progesterone. That may have to happen. And you want to, if you're going to do that, you want to do that in the most natural way possible. But some of the other ways to produce more progesterone are, believe it or not, sex. <laughs> When your body is having, you know, when you're having regular sex, when you're like regularly, especially regularly having orgasms, then you're producing all those hormones and you're actually producing more progesterone. And it's a good form of progesterone and you don't need a lot. Mm -hmm. you, you don't really need anywhere near as much estrogen or progesterone as you think you do. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you're going to look at your labs, you're looking at to have a 10 to one ratio between the estrogen and the progesterone. Okay. Okay. And a lot of women don't have that. And that's where, again, like I said, some people do have to supplement and you just want to try to find the most natural. And I have found personally that the pills don't work that well. Okay. Um, if you're going to do anything, cream is probably the way to start. And okay. just tiny little doses. Don't use the full dose that it says on the container. You want to just kind of see how, because you're going to get fat, honestly. Okay. Yep. yep <laughs> you don't yep. want to gain weight. You know, this is the thing is everybody in menopause are trying not to gain weight, right? They're right. Trying, no, for sure. They're, they're trying to keep their weight. And the other thing that we're kind of missing in our lives is DHEA. That's a, the precursor hormone. And guess mm -hmm. what happens? Why we have trouble with DHEA? It's because we produce too much cortisol because we're stressed mm. out all the time. So they all connected. <laughs> so they all connected, right? So less sugar, less stress, deep breathing, shaking, 
sex and you're going to have a much more pleasant menopause. See? So, I mean, that's definitely good, good news not to, ha- not to have to have any, any outside support from, you know, from drugs. We could do things in a more natural and, and holistic way, right? Exactly. You know, and, it, and if that doesn't work, then you want to try to find yourself a doctor who really knows what they're doing with hormone replacement. Because mm-hmm. so many of them took a weekend course and mm-hmm. they just set up shop. I'm going to do bioidentical hormones and they're way over medicating women. And one of the big things that can happen is if they're giving you um, testosterone Mm -hmm. and you're stressed out and you're not Mm -hmm. addressing your stress. And for most of us, let's face it, we're not addressing our stress. Right. No, for sure. If you're taking that testosterone, what's happening to that testosterone is actually getting made into a compound in your body called DHT. Mm -hmm. And it's a form of testosterone, but what that one does is it makes your hair fall out. Um, it um, unbalances your um, your libido, mm-hmm. so your libido drops. Um, it um, makes your skin not as soft. Your skin gets rougher, which is one of the things that people you know notice in menopause, anyways, right? Their skin's not as soft as it used to be. Sure. Um, you're more likely to get wrinkles and you're more likely to be dry in the vaginal area. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be taking a lot of testosterone if you're not managing all the rest of your hormones. And and what ends up happening a lot with, with, with people who they just run the labs and they're not necessarily even running the best labs. You know, they're running what they have available to them through quest because it's covered by the insurance. And there are other ways to check the labs that are going to be more efficient. Like I personally, I really like the Dutch test, which is a dried urine test. Um, it's not covered by insurance, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, but it is to, you know, from what I can see, and especially cause they just added some really fantastic things to that test. So when they do the, the Dutch test, they're not only looking at your, um, your, your estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. They're looking at your cholesterol levels. They're looking at your DHEA and they're looking at your organic acids. So they're telling you how well you're absorbing your food. Mm. So it is a really good test. I mean, I'm not saying it's the only test or, you know, if you don't get it done, you can't manage things. But I I am going to tell you that there's a lot of people out there who do bioidentical hormones who don't really know what they're doing and Mm. aren't really trained to do it. So um, what would be a good way to kind of, I mean, to, to find out if someone has a background or, or not, you know, beyond just the, the, the small course that they might have taken or? Well, I think to be honest, you can ask them. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think we don't do enough of that asking our doctors. So how did you learn about this? So what's your right. philosophy on this? Right. You know, I'm talking to somebody else and they told me that I should be concerned about how much testosterone I'm getting. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I really don't want my estrogen levels to be over 50. Mm -hmm. So I understand that you, you know, where do you shoot for? What are you looking at when you're trying to figure out my estrogen levels? Um, I think also, you know, I'm not going to say that functional medicine doctors are the only ones that know how to do it. I'm sure that's not true, but functional medicine doctors are trained to think this way. Sure. Sure. Not so kind of taking in, in these other things, which I think are important, right? That, you know, your stress levels could have a big impact and going there first. Is that what you, would you say? Well, that's the thing is, you know, we're trained to look at the root cause, what's Mm -hmm. really happening in your body and then going, you know, so for a lot of people, it is, it's that, you know, you're stressed, you're not, you know, you're trying to do 10 things at once. You're multitasking. The body's not naturally designed to multitask. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I know for me, when I was still working as a surgeon, the biggest thing that would happen to me almost every day was that no matter where I was, I was supposed to be somewhere else. Sure. (laughs) Right. You know, I'm, you know, I'm at the surgery center and the hospital's calling me. I, we need you to come take a look at this patient. Uh, You know, I'm, I run out of the hospital and my office is calling me. (laughs) Patients at 3.30. Did you forget? (laughs) Yes, I forgot. <laughs> I don't know why. I can't think straight. My hair is falling out. <laughs> right. And literally my hair fell out. I'm not kidding. I, I just have now gotten like a full head of hair after oh. three years of not being a surgeon. So, 
Yeah. So looking at like that, that root cause and how we're taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is for us to just get to this place where we love ourselves, no matter what we do, Mm -hmm. no matter how things are looking, you know, that we accept the fact that, you know, for example, I, I I know I was telling you before we, we started recording. Yeah. I still get hot flashes. I'm not going to say that I don't. Right. (laughs) My relationship with my hot flashes are okay. This is a normal part of this part of my life. Sure. And, you know, if I, if it, I, for the most part, I just let it, you know, I, it's funny because like from one minute I could be freezing and then I'm hot and sweaty and then I'm freezing again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't, um, I don't think to myself, oh my God, I'm having a hot flash. This is terrible. I think to myself, oh, hot flash. Okay. Well, if it gets really bad, I'll go stick my head in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That mindset piece is huge. I mean, I've had so many people now, you know, coming on just for just different topics, but coming back to just the power of, of the mind over, you know, how it can affect our, our bodies and our attitude and just our day. Right? Yeah. From beyond that. And like, yeah, like kind of accepting the fact that you're doing the best you can mm. in every moment, you're doing the best that you can. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if, if other people aren't giving you that feedback that you're doing the best you can, you can give it to yourself. Mm hmm. No, I love that. Well, I really enjoyed this. You know, this is a good a good perspective to bring to my my listeners. I would say, you know, even if they're not, you know, in menopause just yet, right? If it's just just good strategies for for dealing with our lives that can be really stressful, unfortunately, Absolutely. right? Yep. So, where can people connect more with you after tuning in? And anything special you have going on? I know you said you had a a, a handout that they could maybe go check out, but just if you want to mention anything else going on. Yeah, I have a handout for them. Um, I have two handouts actually. One is how to improve your libido, mm-hmm. because for a lot of us that's an issue. And and you know, one thing I I meant to talk about is, um, it, it's not there's no shame in using a good lube. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's absolutely no shame in that. And there's some really good ones out there. And I will make sure they're included in my handout, Mm -hmm. what I think are the good ones. Because um, you don't want to be using something that's got a lot of propylene glycol. I mean, that is antifreeze. You want that down there? Mm -hmm. Not really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably not. (laughs) So there's, you know, there's some good water-based ones. Um, uh, And I think it's called... Amrita, Amrita, E-M-E-R-I-T-A is one that I like. Sustain is another one that's good. Mm -hmm. And those can both be used with condoms. Um, And if you don't need to use condoms, (laughs) um, then the one I really am loving right now is from Honey Colony. It's Mm -hmm. kind of a small company, but they make this, um, I'm probably going to like mess her up into her. She's going to like run out, but um, (laughs) she has a product called Curious. Okay. And it's an oil-based lube, but it is designed specifically to maintain the pH and the normal environment in your vagina so that you don't get into problems with your bacteria being um, off track. Mm, mm-hmm. So I really like that one. And the other one that I'm really liking right now, um, Anna Kabeka is a gynecologist who made this cream called Julva, J-U-L-V-A. Um, and if people want that one, they should let me know. Um, and I have a, right now I have an offer. They can get a, a sample for $5. Oh, cool. So, cool. Um, so any of those, and you can find me, I'm on, um, I'm on the internet at drmissary.com. So www.drmessere.com. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm on Facebook under my own name. And I'm also on Facebook under Soul Deep Wellness, which is the name of my company. Awesome. Very cool. Well, I really enjoyed chatting with you and I feel like we could we could chat forever so maybe I mean if people have more questions maybe we'll have to have you back that'd be great I would love that thanks for being on the show oh you're welcome it was fun thanks for listening to the fit 15 for show notes and more visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast see you next time Hi friends, it's Catherine. I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned some great tips and are ready to decrease your stress and anxiety whether you are currently in menopause or not. I know I'm going to be doing some humming and oming and maybe even some singing if I can find some time to sing with no one else around to hear me to reduce my stress today. So I hope you use those tips or some of the other ones yourself and let us know how it goes. 
wanted to also pop on because tomorrow, Friday, September 28th, 2018, at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Jason Karp, who is an expert in the field of running. He has his PhD in exercise science. He's written eight books. He's just someone I'm really excited to be able to talk to after listening to several of his talks and getting inspired by all his research and it's really going to be a big honor for me to talk to him, but I would love to bring your running questions instead of just my own. So if you would like to submit a running question, email me at podcast at fitarmadillo.com. That's podcast at fitarmadillo.com. If you find this episode and it's past the 28th of September 2018 and you want to submit a question for Jason, he was very receptive to this interview. So maybe I'll get him back on or I can just get his answers and, and let you know. So Feel free to send in your questions regardless and let me know any other topics or guests you'd like to hear from. So I hope that you get to send in those questions for that interview. And regardless of whether you get to or not, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss that conversation when it goes live and future episodes of the Fit 15. Remember to get you moving with us at least 15 minutes, five days a week. I do release a new episode Monday through Friday during the regular season of the podcast. So Hope you get to enjoy that by subscribing and look forward to your questions. Chat with you tomorrow. Bye. Carolyn Masseri.